everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. In today's video, we're going to talk about a concern that a lot of people have, getting behind. I think what we all want as homeschool parents is for our kids to learn as much as possible as quickly as possible. I think what we're talking about when we say getting behind is getting behind the public school system, not getting behind our own goals that we set for our kids that are tailored to their unique needs and interests and maybe areas where they struggle um, and then getting behind those goals. We're talking about getting behind public school standards. They have to find the kid who is sort of in the middle of the pack in each subject and then they build a curriculum around that basically. When you say I'm worried about getting behind in, in homeschool, what you're probably doing is probably to an, one extent or another copying the public school methodology in your home school and trying to keep up with public school. Before we talk about anything else, I want to talk about the results from public schools because if we're going to copy a public school methodology in our home and try to keep pace with public schools, we should look at the results and see if that's something that we want to copy in our home schools. Unsurprisingly, the results are not very good. The average American reads at a 7th to 8th grade reading level. I think we can probably do a little better than that. The average American struggles with middle school math. Again, I think we can do better. And the average American struggles to write. So the average American can, can write some stuff, <laughs> but if you were to ask them to write an article or to write a story or something like that, they would struggle a lot with that. Those are the basics, reading, writing, and math. And public schools are really, really failing. And at the same time, they find lots of extra time to teach kids lots of controversial stuff that lots of people don't like, but they are failing abysmally with reading, writing, and math, the basics. And in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to copy that methodology and worry about keeping pace with them when they are failing so abysmally. They, they make this good show of, of making good progress and moving quickly and doing all kinds of great things, but five, 10 years after graduation, the results are not too amazing. When we're worried about getting behind, the most important idea is pacing. So let's look at pacing in public schools. They're working to the average. They are just trying to see what they can reasonably do in a year. And, and that's how they do it. It's not rocket science. If public school people had your two or your three kids, they would come up with a completely different plan because the average would be different if they were working with your three kids. They wouldn't say, ah, oh, we have these three kids. We're going to do exactly what we do with millions of kids. That wouldn't make sense, would it? So they wouldn't even do that if they had your three kids to design a curriculum for and to, to pace that curriculum out for. They would do things differently. My favorite example is math. Let's look at the pacing for math. So I'm guessing if you're watching this video, your kid probably isn't ahead so much as behind, at least in one subject, and that's okay. That's one of the beauties of homeschools is that you can move at your own pace. So you can probably guess where I'm going in this video. I don't love the idea of forcing kids into a very specific mold um, for the average child that the public school set, right? But let's just look at math and talk about pacing there. So the public schools have a very specific pacing that they follow, and that's how they, they organize things when you're dealing with millions of kids. But what if your kid is having trouble working at that pace? Let's think about this a little. Does it make sense to force your kid to move at a faster pace than your kid is able to really comprehend the ideas? Wouldn't it make more sense to actually give your child the time that your child needs to really understand the ideas. In reality, that's all you really can do. Your child needs a certain amount of time. So if you wanted to keep pace with the public school system, which I don't really advise, but if you really wanted to do that, the only answer is to add more time. So in our homeschool, we do three to four hours a day. Um, my 11 year old is doing three hours a day. My 14 year old is doing four hours a day. And last year, my kids were doing an hour and a half to two hours of math a day. And I, was, I started logging all of the times and I said, does this really make sense? Do I value math so much that I wanted to represent a third of my children's total educational time? To me, that doesn't make sense, but it's okay if that makes sense to you, but you need to make a conscious decision about it and say, yes, I value this. And the only way around it is more time. 
And even there is a limit to that because some kids just need more time developmentally. So even if you put in two hours a day, and I think if you put in more than two hours, I, I don't think that that's a good idea at all. But say you put in two hours a day, some kids are just gonna need time, like as in like time, like a year, just to grow and to be able to comprehend those abstract ideas. Because math is really abstract, actually. So those are your options. Either just move more slowly and accept that your kid is maybe not going to be a, a rocket scientist, or push your kid by requiring that your child does a couple hours of math a day. And also keep in mind, if you're thinking about, I don't want my kid to get behind, I want them to keep pace with public school kids, those kids are not really working at the pace you think they are. It's kind of a party trick. And what happens as kids get older and older and older and they're pushed beyond their ability to really comprehend things, they can get the answer, right answer for a while and then they, they, they hit a wall and they're not able to do it anymore. They're just so confused because they haven't been understanding things for the past three years and now they're done and they can't understand things. For me, it is much preferable to have my kids move more slowly but fully understand what they're doing. I would rather my kids just get through algebra but really, really solidly understand it because they would be heads and tails above your average American. Your average American struggles with middle school math, so that's not even algebra. So again, this idea that we need to keep pace with the public schools, it's, it's really, it's all fake. It's not real. Those kids are not really remembering this material, really ever fully understanding this material, much less retaining it for the long term. So if public school pacing really isn't good or it doesn't make sense for your unique child, then how should you develop pacing? Well, what I would start with is to ask yourself, how long can my kid do schoolwork before they get brain fried? And by that I mean, do they start making silly mistakes that they wouldn't normally make because they can't think straight anymore? They're just sort of mentally tired. I don't mean a negative attitude. I mean mentally tired. They're two different things. Negative attitudes need to be pushed through to get to the other side, but you really cannot push through mental fatigue and, and brain fry. You, you have to just at least take a break for a few hours and, and let the kid play. If you ins <laughs> insist on doing more that day, you at least need to take a break. You can't push through it. So you have like a limited amount of time during the day. So for my son, it's, it's about four hours. After that, he is just not able to focus. And it's three hours for my daughter. We were trying to do four hours, wasn't working. It's three hours for my daughter. And beyond that, they're just not learning much. So I could say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna force them. But you can't, you just can't do it. Uh, if they're not able, to focus and, and it's boring to them after a certain amount of time, whether it's an hour or two or three or four hours, then it's gonna go in one ear and out the other, or it's just gonna like bounce off their ears and never go in. You, you cannot force that kind of thing. So this idea of pacing, I understand in the public school system because they have to have some sort of system to make things happen, but in a homeschool situation, it doesn't make as much sense. So what I would say is, how much time can your kids reasonably do homeschool and make that your goal every day? And whatever your child learns is fine. It doesn't matter how fast they go or how slow they go. As long as they're putting in that three or four hours or two hours of solid, good quality work. Obviously, if your kids are playing video games all day or they're just doing a half an hour of work a day and they're 15, well, yeah, they're gonna get behind, but what you should be concerned about the getting behind is not public school kids, but their personal best. So what would be, not their personal best, but their ideal. So your individual little human, <laughs> what are they capable of? And are they behind that? That is more your, your guide, is what is your per little person able to do? And are they getting behind that? Because they're just not putting time in. But to give our kids a hard time because they're not learning fast enough is really not kind. Again, if they are sitting down and they are putting the work in, it's kind of awful to say, it's not good enough, you're not learning fast enough. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not really nice. We need to make realistic goals and then 
work and I make time goals. I mean, that's what we do in the world of work most of the time is we have, we set time goals and we just put in good work and whatever happens, happens. Usually there's great progress, but you know, in some areas, kids are gonna need a little longer sometimes. For example, my son is 14. He's on year two of doing algebra. We've gone through several books and he's really starting to wrap his brain around it. If I tried to force him to finish algebra one and then now we're gonna do algebra two this year and then, it, yes, I guess we could have gone through it. Yes, he could have gotten the answers, but he wouldn't have fully understood it. And at the end of the day, pushing forward like that would have been just a waste of his time, a waste of my time, and kind of sad when you think about it because education actually represents, your, your education through high school represents a huge chunk of your life. And the thought that we could spend 85% of that chunk of our life just wasting it because we, we spend time trying to memorize things that when we're out of school, we didn't remember it. It's not there anymore, it's gone, or maybe it was never in our head to begin with. But let's talk about the subjects that are picked. Again, I'm gonna go back to the time really briefly. It is related. So we do four hour school days. There's 180 days in your average school year. That works out to be 2,880 hours to complete a high school education if you do it like I do. And no matter how you do it, there, there is a certain limited amount of time. So any class that you take, that your any subject that your child studies is going to take time out of that. You, you only have so much time. Time is not an unlimited resource. So this is where I start to wonder, why do we have the priorities as a society that we do? Biology, chemistry, trigonometry, even physics. Not everyone needs these things. Some people do. If you have an interest in those things, by all means, study those subjects. That's important. Anytime a child has an interest in something, they should study that subject because they will probably use that in their adult life. It's interesting and it will probably be useful information to them later. But I have to wonder about why that we make biology and chemistry uh, an important subject for kids to have an in-depth knowledge of at the high school level. Now, anybody who is well-read and re reads from a wide variety of topics is gonna know some basics about chemistry and biology, but I'm talking about a more in-depth study because even if you only took one hour a day for one year, that's 180 hours. 180 hours for a subject that the child is gonna forget 85% or more of the information. They're gonna remember next to nothing all that time spent. Now, what if instead of spending time on that, your child spent time on something that was more useful? Budgeting and finance, perhaps? That could be useful. Some kids might be going in, in a direction of graphics design. You know, you can tell what your kids are interested in, what their aptitudes are. Maybe it would be better for that child to really take a few courses in graphics design instead of spending the time on the biology class or the chemistry class. Why are we so worried about copying a public school system in our homeschool? Is that really in the best interest of our unique child with who has unique interests, unique aptitudes? Is it a good idea? I don't think it is. I think we need to have a unique education for our child and use their limited time that they have wisely in order to best prepare them for adult life. I guess what it boils down to are what are your priorities? For me, my priorities are to help my children learn as much as they can in as short amount of time as possible and also leave time in their life to socialize, to learn how to work so they have chores and just to enjoy their family. To have basically to lead a balanced life while also becoming as educated as possible. Now, in order to do that, I cannot copy the public school system. If I'm not copying the public school system, then I, I'm not gonna be worried about pacing. A lot of you are gonna be concerned about getting into college and what about transcripts and my state requires this and my state requires that. Most states, you can get around it. Are you gonna be so worried about what the state is requiring that you're not gonna do what's in the best interest of your child? You're gonna force your child to spend 85% of their time for four years, well, longer than that, I mean, if you include middle school and elementary, 85% of their time 
studying things that they are going to forget rather than trying to do a more child-led education. I have a link at the end of this video. It's about literature-based education. It explains how we homeschool. There is structure, there are guidelines, there are rules, but it is child-led. When it is child-led, your child is way more likely to remember the information. You will be astounded if you try to do this when you see the kind of stuff that your children are repeating back to you because they are actually interested. You see, when we learn things as an adult, you know this, but we think kids are different. You know that when you wanna learn something, it better be interesting or it better be useful. And if it's not interesting or useful, it goes in one ear out the other and your children are no different. If you work with their nature rather than against it, you're gonna use this, this time wisely. You're gonna have a nice time homeschooling. Your children are going to enjoy education and have a positive attitude and hopefully as they get older and as they move out of your, your house, they're gonna still want to be uh, people who learn things. They're gonna wanna read things and, and become even more and more educated. But if you torture them for 13 years and give them the most boring things possible and make them hate learning and hate school and hate education, you will hate the experience. Your kids will hate the experience. And when they move out of your house, they'll probably never read another book again. And they will not be interested in, in becoming more educated. So again, what are your priorities? Are your priorities making the state happy or your priorities doing the right thing for your individual child? And maybe those two can go together, but if they don't, I know what I'm gonna pick. I'm not gonna pick making the state happy if that does not uh, match up with doing what is best for my children. So that's about it. You decide how much time you're gonna homeschool in the day. You set standards for yourself and then you worry about keeping up with those standards. Don't worry about keeping up with the public school standards. It doesn't make any sense. And most likely your kid's not the average kid. So it's not going to make sense for your kid. Um, if you like this video, please click thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe and the notification bell next to it. If you have any comments or thoughts or opinions, please tell me in the comments below. And in the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.